calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Tanya Fisser Live is proudly brought to you by Mayford. Grow your own from seed to plate. Gardena, passion every season. And tanyafisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Good morning everybody and cheers, bottoms up. Doot, doot. I hope you got your herb water because today is all about growing your herbs keeping you healthy. I know, yeah, I know they're bad alcohol again, um, but you know, herb water, mm. is it the same? Well, I'm sure you can make it the same because I hear there are loads of recipes out there at the moment on pineapples and apples and you can put a bit of cinnamon in there, a bit of mint in there and it could be disguised as anything. Anyway guys, it's 11 o'clock and welcome, welcome. Um, it's great to have you with us um, right here uh, on Facebook Live. Now for those of you who missed yesterday, um, no you didn't miss it actually yesterday, you were present. But if you missed our live Facebook stream which we did in aid of the Sunflower Fund which is the Bone Marrow Registry of South Africa, then I'm sorry but but, 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 it's all not lost. Um, you can go and have a look at it again. It was, it was a journey called um, Down the Garden Path and it's, it's a reflection of my personal journey um, throughout COVID. Um, and uh, yeah, a couple of very, very personal secrets. I must have been, been high on mint or something, but I let a lot, I let a cat out the bag and lots of cats. In fact, it was like a whole horde of cats. Um, but we had loads of fun. It was freezing cold um, up here in Asagai today, uh, yesterday. The wind was howling. Um, the poor cameraman um, and the tech crew, uh, I think they had frostbite because we were on the veranda. But it was a great, great day. And all it costs you to relook at that um, Facebook Live, which is now on their channel. So if you go to the Sunflower Fund, it costs you a 100 Rand donation, guys. Um, so please, it's really a worthy cause. If you can do that, thanks to you and heads up to you. All right, guys. So today we're talking herbs and all things herbs. Now, I'm not touching on that herb, that one. You know that one. No, I'm not touching on that because, you know, you can read about it. You can Google it. You can find out everything you need to grow um, and how to grow it. Um, but for me, for Tanya, no, I, I don't go there. Um, so... Uh, just, yeah, hang in with me. There's enough um, information out there if you need to learn how to grow that herb. But anyway, today is a huge shout out to Gardena. Um, thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, remember, Gardena, they're the tools that you need. They last, they don't break. The dogs even battle to destroy them. And a huge shout out to Mayford Seeds. Man, guys, it's great to have you on board. Um, and, and we really are chuffed. So thank you to the Mayford team. Uh, we want to see today who is here. Now, I know that some of you like had to shovel the snow to get to your front doors and crack the ice um, because it's been chilly. So let's say good morning to a few people. Um, Patricia, good morning from Southfield, Cape Town. Um, Larisha from Hillcrest. Morning, morning, darling. Um, Wayne, um, Jamma and Wayne here. Mwah. Hello, guys. Um, Allah Almania, love your posts. Oh, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alicia is saying good morning. Crawly things. Morning, my darling. Mwah, mwah, mwah. This is my 13-year-old. Bang. Why are you out of school? Um, why are you out of school? 
Oh. Um, oh no, okay. I think I think you're allowed to be. All right, you're allowed to be. Um, Megs, please take this telephone. It is on silent, but now I see who's um, mutual and federal are trying to phone me. No, they must go away. Go away. I'm very, very, I'm very, very, very busy right now. You know how they say. Um, Crawley things. I'm going to get to your question in a second. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, Renata, hello from PE. Not lucky with herbs. You killed your parsley. <laughs> <laughs> Many of us have killed parsley, baby, but I'm going to get back to that it's throughout the course of this morning's live. Um, Wendy, good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Colleen from Westville. I see some of our locals here. Um, I feel like I know you. I feel like you, you know, it's like when, as soon as we start setting up, I say, so So who's come on live? Are they there? Are, are, are the locals there? Are the regulars? It's like going down to the local pub, except that you're still in front of your computer screen and you're sipping some herbal tea, I hope. Tea. Yes, tea. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, Sue Hubach, good morning from Waterfall. Patricia Stain from Southfield. Yes, I've got to you. Oh, Sivy Pele, good morning from PMB. Uh, morning from Coxstad. Kathy, good morning. You must be brrr, You must be very, very cold. Um, oh, Crawley thinks you're homeschooled. Okay, well, okay, I'll take that all back. Okay, well done. You're homeschooled. <laughs> You see, I'm watching you. I've got my eye on you. Um, Jason, hello from JP Auto. Hello, Jason. Aren't you meant to be doing work? But this is work because this is expanding your knowledge. Um, Nikki, good morning from Hillcrest. Um, Caleb, all the way from Amams and Toti. Um, Cantha from Centurion Pretoria. We've got Debbie from Leisure Bay. My gosh, you are all here. Right, let's get cooking, guys, and let's get it started now. If you haven't had breakfast yet, by the end of this morning, you are going to run out into the garden, grab anything that you can identify as a herb, because you are going to be cooking with it, and you are going to be doing things with it. Um, because I hope that you are going to become inspired, completely inspired. Now, with anything... Remember when you're starting out, and I find this one of the biggest, biggest issues, and one of the questions that I get so often, when you're starting out with growing herbs, guys, start small, please. If it's in a pot like this, if it's there, or if you're growing it in a trough, please grow, start it in small bits. It's really, really important. And very important is to label it. See here? Label Label, label, label it. Now, when you're labeling, there are a couple of things I, I just want you to know. Number one, use one of these rigid plastic labels, okay? They, they generally work better because they last longer. They don't snap off and get brittle. Um, so use this guy. Use a permanent marker or else you use an HB pencil. HB pencil, rain, wind, spit, um, dogs, whatever, will not take away what your writing is. Because you need to label your herb. Because so many of you buy herbs because you've read about something that it's good for your arthritis or it's good for your gammy elbow or it's good for your hemorrhoids. And then you forget, oops, now which herb was that? Was it that one, that one, or that one? Because you can't remember what the name of the herb is and you've lost the label. So then you think, okay, I'm just not going to touch them. I'm not going to touch them. So label them. It's so important. All right? It's very, very easy. And if you want to find out, if you want to know how to make your own plant labels simply out of using one of those plastic milk bottles, then check out our YouTube channel because we've got a very, very cool clip there to show you how to save, upcycle, and make more. All right. So that's the first thing that we need to know is how to label them. The next thing, herbs require sunlight. Most of the herbs that I'm going to talk about today are from the Mediterranean. All right, Mediterranean, ha, oh, okay. What have we got? What's the picture? What's the picture? Come on, anybody out there? Let's see if you're awake. Um, Mediterranean, it's blue, blue, azure, blue seas. Oh, a couple of million dollar yachts. James Bond on the one. Rocky outcrops. Rocky, really rocky. Lots of slate, lots of shale, and lots of sun. Oh, and a cocktail. Of course, there's got to be a cocktail, yes. Okay, but that's where a lot of them come from. Your thyme, your rosemary, your rocket, they all come from there. So we've got to think about those conditions when we are wanting to grow them in our garden. 
Now, there are a few exceptions to the rule, but most importantly, what you're wanting is lots of sun. Sun. And also good drainage. Because most of these herbs actually grow wild. That's their natural habitat. So it would be like us going for a walk in the hills around us and coming across a rocket plant growing in the wild. That's where it all came from. We never invented this. Man never invented this. The big man upstairs did. And that's where they come from. So that's what we're trying to do is emulate that setting. So most importantly, most herbs don't like wet feet. No, 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 no. You don't like wet feet because you get rising damp. All right. You know when you've had your shoes on for a long time and you squish, squish, squish and your toes come out all wrinkled? It's most uncomfortable, most dreadful. And I think that could be used as another way of Chinese torture. Correct. But I'm not giving you any ideas on that. So most importantly, well drained, lots of sunlight. OK, and then you're in the right spot. Now, so many of us attempt to do this by getting a little windowsill planter, a little... Um, a window box and we put some herbs in and we say it's going to be perfect in my courtyard but do you know how much sun your courtyard gets so find the position first looking at the sun and how it moves and remember we've gone past the winter solstice so the sun was at its lowest lowest point so everything is now starting to change so keep an eye on the spot where you've got them because sometimes it's purely about the position Okay, like in real estate, they say everything is about position, position, position. Um, and that's what's important. So get that right, and you've already got the first few steps in the right direction. Okay, right. Um, Trish. Tish says, Mediterranean is winter rainfall, like here on the West Coast. Yes, you got it right, 100%. Um, you're only locking in now because of load shedding. I cook a lulu. I know. Never mind COVID, we've now got load shedding to deal with as well. But you know what we've been doing during load shedding? And um, man, it's been fun. Do, do you know how many people, <laughs> you're watching TV or something and you're watching the clock? Five to six, four minutes to six, three minutes. Oh, it's going, it's going, dear, it's going. The power's going to go out. And then the TV goes off and then you sit, sit staring at the TV. Come on, guys. Um, rather not. Uh, we've been downloading some audio books. And whilst we're busy in the kitchen or whilst we're just sitting uh, with a few candles going, we're listening to the audio books. And it's wonderful. Um, you're using the time really, really well. You're growing your mind. You're growing your own inner self. And man, we've learned a lot. We really, really have. So, so you know, don't, don't get one of those sexy, steamy audio books because then you've got to only listen to it with your and your ears like this, okay, get something for the whole family that you can all listen to, so keep it tidy, you know what I'm saying, keep it tidy, okay, right, so what are we going to go with today, I want to start you off with this, okay, just to get you a little bit in the mood, now, these guys over here, have a look here, <laughs> see, see, what are these, okay, so these are little blocks which we make simply in an ice cube tray and this one in particular has got basil, rosemary and thyme in it um, and we keep these in the fridge, we keep them in one of those Ziploc bags, we keep in the deep freeze actually not in the fridge, we keep it in the deep freeze so you know when you're when you're just about to, ready to start cooking, um, it's late at night or it's got dark because it's winter and you think oh I need some herbs, who's going to go down to the herb garden if it's down there? Nobody's going to go down. You're going to be too scared to get down there. So I want to show you this very quick clip on how to make these guys and just get you in the mood. So hang in there.
So now you know how to make them and all you got to do is keep them and then pop them out and let me tell you, eggs, eggs will never, never ever taste, oh that's nice. Did the rosemary just bah, just hit you? Eggs will never taste the same. When you're frying up some onions, which is the basis for any good meal, remember if you've got an onion in your house, you are a chef, in my opinion. As long as you've got an onion, you can cook absolutely anything. All right, guys. So, I, I mean, I love it. I absolutely love it. I want to take you to another herb now. And uh, you're going to come across with me here. We picked these a couple of months ago, and, and this is dried rosemary. Now, look here. Do, you see this? Do you see how easy this is? We've just picked them and we've hung them up in an airy space and already, see, look when I do this. Look there. Do you see how you can just crush them? So when you're ready to cook, you simply just don't go and grab that bunch, give it a little squeeze and then, and there it is. It, it's powerful. It hits you. It's beautiful. And I love it. What do you use rosemary for? So, we all know the typical things, okay, that rosemary should be used with what? Let's see, we're checking, we're checking, we're checking. Rosemary and lamb, of course, yes. But you can use it with chicken, you can use it with anything. Personally, I throw rosemary into almost everything. Remember, it's quite a heavy herb. It's, it's, it's quite powerful. So you do have to be... Um, just very sparse and very lenient with how much you're going to add to it. Um, but there's one rosemary in particular that I just love. And we don't have this growing in the vegetable garden. I have it growing in the flower garden, okay, because it is so beautiful. Now, this one over here is called Tuscan Blue. Now, can you see how long this guy is? Look at him. Look. This is one stalk. And that's the virtue of Tuscan Blue, because it's got these long stalks instead of McConnell's, which is the old one that a lot of us have got in our garden. It has many segments. So this guy for me is perfect. The bees love rosemary. They just love it. And so do the butterflies. So what does that help? I mean, when you say, are oh, the bees and the butterflies in my garden? Well, what it does do, it improves biodiversity. Biodiversity is so important in your garden and also as pollinators. Because remember, without them, without the bees, they say the world would end in about five years. True story. So what do we do with this guy? Take it and strip it. There we go. Take it and strip it. All of this you can keep, all right, and you can dry this. You can either pop this in the microwave on a um, put a bit of a paper towel underneath it, put a paper towel on top of it and microwave like for 20, 30 seconds. That's it. And then you've got dried rosemary. Okay, quick and easy. <clears throat> the other thing you can do, of course, is as we've got it over there where we've hung it up to dry and it's going through its natural process. But, of course, the way that we use it at home, which is most Friday nights, is for uh, a chop uh, without a dop. <laughs> So all we do is, um, is we give it a, a little snip so we've got a nice sharp point there, nice sharp point, okay, we've got all of this going over here and I wish you could just smell the, the aromas that are happening in here at the moment. Onto this I put whole lamb chops, Whew, straight through, whole lamb chops because I, I'm not a fan of a kebab, you know, bits of things, I want to see the whole choppy, whole lamb chops on here and then whack it onto the bra and then what's happening? You're getting all those essential oils oozing out of it, into it, because now it's gone right through the lamb, right, right, right through. And this, my friends, is amazing, absolutely amazing. If you're due for a bra this weekend, that's what you need to do. And if you have to put cubes of lamb or beef on it, well, then it's okay. I'll just say a prayer for you. Um, but anyway, the other great thing that rosemary is for is, of course, this is we have it growing really close um, to the patio area in the garden. We take it like this, and what I normally do is just turn over the end, just before I'm going to bra. So you see, I've almost got a little brush. Can you see? These are like the bristles. On the bra grid, as you've lit the fire, okay, and you want to make sure that that bra grid is just squeaky clean, just squeak, 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 clean it over, brush it over, and there you go, you have eliminated any germs, any bacteria, because this rosemary oils kills those bad guys.
fantastic. You've done it well. What do you do when you're done with it? Do you throw it away? No, you put it in the fire, in the fire, because then you get that aroma. So many ways with this, and I just love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, so that's a, that's a quick 101 on that. Um, what I want to go to now is I want to go to two of probably the most popular, popular herbs that so many of us grow, try to grow, sometimes not so successfully, but if you haven't tried them, then here are the lessons. Okay, number one is this, sweet basil. Guys, I know it's cold and sweet basil is not going to be ideal to plant out into the garden now, but you've got to start germinating it and getting it ready for when the cold is over. And for those of you that live in the coastal regions or where it's subtropical, you can grow it right throughout the season. Okay, so if you're in the colder areas, this is what I want you to do. So take a look over here. You can use one of these little gadgets here. So this is a little planter box and I just love it. It's got the ventilation on the top. All right, open it up. Oh, and there my babies. Look at you. Look at the precious things. We've got some mustard in here. We've got some basil, of course. Look at it. And then as you brush your hand over it, oh, it's gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I'm going to leave you open. So you can grow it in one of these because number one, it's raised off the ground. So frost is not going to get to it. Plus, you've got the cover, which is going to keep it nice and warm and snug. All right. These guys are available from builders, so you can go and pick them up, and they're really easy to put together, and they work brilliantly. Okay, so let's get back to beautiful basil. What do we need to know about basil? Okay, so besides the fact that it has been used for eons and decades in cooking um, and been eaten, we also need to know a couple of other things, and that's most importantly that it has um, flavonoids in it. So flavonoids, what do they do? When you are, are eating something, the property called flavonoids actually protects the white blood cells, which we know are really, really important for us. The next thing that they are able to do is they've got a, a, a high amount of vitamin K and vitamin C in them, which is all important. And we wonder that they've also got, we also know that basil has a property in them that actually works similar to ibuprofen. Oh, you all know that drug. Yeah, you all know that one. And paracetamol. So what is that? Anti-inflammatory. This is what these guys help with. Okay, so besides the fact that we love eating it, we know that it's got important health benefits. And I've only mentioned three, and there are hundreds of health benefits for this guy. Okay, so let's show you how we're going to get it right and how we're going to make sure that we sew these guys just perfectly. Okay, I'm going to move those babies across. What we're going to need is this, all right, and I'm going to get my my peat over here, my coconut husk. Remember this stuff was this. Remember, this is palm peat. Okay. Oh, I've got it the right way up, Max. I thought it was upside down. This is palm peat. Remember, it was this block. You pop it into a container and all that it does, it takes about 20 minutes. If you wanted to hurry up and do it, add a bit of warm water. If not, you just add normal water to it, five liters, and it turns into this beautiful, beautiful, friable um, product, which we use. There, look, 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 look. Do you see the water? Which we use for germinating absolutely everything. This is what we use. So I've got my little germinating chamber here and we know that we're using a germinating chamber because it's quite chilly, okay? And seeds need warmth and light in order to germinate. Okay, we got that. We all know that. Now, in here, I've got a tray, lots of holes, okay? Lots of holes. There we go. Lots of holes. Can you see me? No, right. Lots of holes. And all we want to do now is we want to take our palm peat and we want to pop it in here okay pop it in here nice and easy okay and i'm going to do this because i'm going to make a terrible mess right now and i want you to take i make these little trowels and um, and it's a little builder's float actually and i love using it because it just gets my surface 
nice and even, which is all important when you're sowing seeds and any seeds. Okay, so you see, I'm just using the ledge here as my guide. Um, fill up any little dongas and craters that you've got. There we go. Fill them up nice and easily. Okay, anything that's left over, you don't waste. Let's take it here. Do not waste it. And this goes back into here. All right. Okay, next thing. And this is where you need to do this, please, because very, very, very often, this is where things go pear. Okay, now with basil, because it's a soft herb, and this basil is the annual basil. Now, you get different types of basil. You get annual basil, which is this one exactly with the lovely glossy leaves. Okay, nice, nice glossy leaves. And then you get perennial basils. Now, come along and look over here. These are perennial basils. Perennial meaning that they go on for two to three years. Um, this one I'm going to show you how to prune a bit later because they need that. You get perennial basils that give you these lovely purple flowers. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, man. And as I'm touching it, I'm just getting these wafts. Lovely purple flowers. You get ones with pink flowers. And they are well, well used as a good garden plant in borders and in flower beds. Don't restrict it to the veggie and herb garden. Guys, bring it in. Bring them right in. You know, put the dancers on the dance floor. Not on the outskirts watching like a warm flower. Put them in. Because that's where they get to shine and do their best. Okay, let's get back to this. So this is the annual basil. Now the annual basil is very, very important to sow regularly. Okay, so, so what does that mean? Because it's annual, it's going to grow, flower, seed and die. Because that's what it does. Okay, that, that's its lifespan. Whereas the perennial will flower and flower and flower and flower. And it just goes on and on and on. When you are doing this, now this is where I want to show you where things go. You can sometimes go pear. Oh my word, look how fine the seed is. Look at it. Oh, crack a jack. What am I going to do here? Now, if I had to sow all of these folks, how oh, cowabunga, I'm probably going to have like, 300 young basil plants coming up. Now, unless you're planning on becoming a subsistence farmer, I would highly recommend that you do not plant or, or do not sow all of these seeds. So I'm going to put some back. So with sweet basil, which is the one I'm using, I want you to sow in two-week intervals. Okay, this is important. Two-week intervals so that you've got different crops growing and maturing at the right time. So it's not feast or famine. And, and that's really important, especially if you're going to be wanting, making, wanting to make lots of basil pesto, which I'm going to give you the recipe for in a second. But we're going to take these herb seeds now, okay, and I'm putting them into a bucky, okay, into a little bucky, and you can see them there. And into that, I'm going to add a handful of palm peat, okay. Now we mix them up. Now the reason for this is because it's really hard. It's really hard, no matter how accomplished a gardener you are, of getting this part right, of sowing them evenly. It's like you concentrate, your tongue is sticking out, yeah, and you're trying to get them like all evenly, and then it goes poof, and there's a whole lot of seeds that have just plonked themselves in here, and you're going to have probably 30 basil seeds germinating in uh, a little, little square centimeter, and then it gets really, really tricky. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're making your life easier. So we take the basil, and now we mix the basil seeds into our mixture. Okay, mix it up. So what we're doing now is we're we bulking it up. We're giving it more volume. You can also do this with um, some mealy meal. You can do it with a bit of flour. Um, I like using this because... It's also going to help just to cover them, and it's got a nice moisture um, holding capacity, um, which is why I use that. So once you've done that, the rest is easy, guys. You've mixed this all in. You can't see it, okay? You can't see it. Where are the seeds? I don't know, but you've got to trust that they're in here, all right? They are in there. And then you take this, and you start from one end. Let's move that out of the way. And all you're going to do is start placing it. There we go. Pop it along, just like that, okay? And you continue this until you've got right to the end. Nice and easy, guys. Nice and easy. Okay. All the way along. 
And if you look really, really closely, you can see one or two seeds there. But, you know, this is where we go wrong. And, um, and it's these little things that make the biggest difference um, in your gardening and how you garden. So, and we want you to be successful. No, because if you're not successful, like if you're not good at hard jump, there's no way you're going to continue doing it. <laughs> Maybe that's a really bad example, but you know what I mean. And so we, we want to give you the tools to be ultra successful so that you can, you can do it and you can do more. Because when you're successful, you do it again. Okay, so we're nearly at the end. you just got to pace yourself as you're going along to see that you get to cover all of this. If you haven't, then just steal a bit from there, steal a bit from there. Okay, right, done, job done. Next thing we do is we take our little trowel, okay, let me move this out the way. Take your, your little trowel and now you firm it down. This is so important, guys, because seed needs to know and have contact. It needs contact with the soil, all right? Very, very important. Okay, so firm it down. Voila, rock star. Job is done. We now take it, pop it into our little germinating chamber. Last thing we need to do is, of course, label it, correct? So we're going to say what it is. It's basil and our soda today. What's the date today, anybody? The 15th. 16th. 16th. Look at that. Hi, ball. Where's the year gone? 16th of the 7th. All right. And we're going to pop it in the side here. Okay, pop it in there. And then we are going to add some water. Now, when watering seeds, guys, listen up, please. Not one of those psh, jets. Not a, even a watering can. You've got to make sure you've got a very fine rose. So if you are going to use a watering can, please make sure that it's got a very, very fine rose over here. Okay, or else you are going to shoot these poor little seeds into the soil next door or even worse um well somewhere else that you know you're not going to be using them so i use this little gadget here it's fabulous it's fabulous look here i'm just going to pour it on here um i use this little guy and this goes onto any plastic bottle two liter bottle whatever um you can get these on our online store um and they work well and they're nice what are those stocking filler things you know those things anyway this is how you water nice and easy it's a nice, gentle, and you see, the germinating tray does not have holes in it. All the germinating tray is doing is giving us that little closed environment. So good soaking. Here we go. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's hear. Let's. Yeah, they're happy, huh? They're happy. They, they, they're going to start great. They, they're very happy. Okay, pop this on top. All right. Now, you can leave it closed because what's going to happen is for the first few days, at least the first week, because this is going to form a little environment right here. Keep it nice, warm and snug in a lot of light. Not direct sun, guys. Not direct sun. Light. Okay. And then when you need to water, you lift it up. And how do you know when you need to water when this changes color? Don't let them dry out. In fact, that's your rule. Do not let these little th these seeds dry out because one or two hours without enough moisture and your seeds are in reverse. In other words, they, they're going to die. Okay, so keep an eye on it. Put it in a place where you can see it regularly and that's it. Then what happens is when they've germinated, and I want to show you another quick trick as well. The other way to do it is with this, okay, these are these little... Um, uh, paper, they, they recycled paper, and all we do is exactly the same, put it in, sow whatever, um, when it starts growing, and this is the part that I love, when it starts germinating, and it's growing, and it's what we get to the full leaf stage, you then take this little guy, and these you can also put in your germinating cha chamber, okay, to help the germination process. When they are about four leaves high, you then take them, and plant this whole thing in the garden, yes! The whole thing in the garden because this when you add water to it starts decomposing and crumbling and then you've got no transplant shock that's what i love okay so now as they've germinated they've got a bit taller they've got to the two or the four leaf stage you're then going to prick them out take out your little bubbas 
plant them into a bigger pot or from there you can go straight into the garden okay makes sense um let's just see if there are any questions around that right now before we get going um come turn on your machine oh there we go there we go there we go okay go um aren't you adding any seed booster i haven't got to that yet you know you people are way ahead of me i've taught you way too much so now hey when i um where's my start grow um here it is so guys when you are watering even your first time of watering your first first application of water you can add a capful of this into one liter of water and you can use that as a drench okay and that is important. What is important about start grow? Start grow is a stimulant. Okay. Basically what it does is it stimulates germination. It does the job. If the avocado pear farmers are using it, if the banana farmers are using it, then absolutely that's what you need to do. So you can use that um, and anything, anything that you've planted. Um, very important. Okay. Right guys. Uh, Cheryl asks, can I use the perennial basil instead of annual basil? What are the advantage of, advantages of annual versus perennial? It's a very good question. Um, now, Cheryl, the, the annual, which is this one over here, basically what it means is, yes, you've just got to sow more. Sow in those two-week intervals that I told you. It's got a better flavor, okay, for culinary. A much better flavor for culinary. The perennial basil is quite heavy, so you would use less. And if you're making pesto, you would definitely use less. For me personally, this I use for culinary, okay, and this I use less of, but especially during summer, what I do use a lot of it for is this, um, and I'm going to show you here, and I'm using my little snip snap shears. Now let me tell you, these guys, they, 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 you're going to pay a little bit extra, but they're good. They're not going to give you blisters because they got a bit of rubber here, okay? They're nice and sharp, and what we're going to do is, and I pick a bit of this. Now, this is the perennial basil, okay, Cheryl? So, I pick some perennial basil, and I use my schnip schnap because they do a great job. Um, I need a bit more, okay? Okay, and then what we do is we put it in a jar, right in the kitchen, okay, especially if you're working with meat, put it in a little jar and then you squeeze it and you bruise it, okay, okay. Mace, what are you smelling? Tell me you can just smell licorice. Mace is smelling licorice. Ah, I'm going to waft them out of here. When you do that, the flies hate it because basil is known as a good companion to plant next to tomatoes, next to the cabbages, next to lettuce. You plant them as a companion because it keeps away the flies, the mites, and the aphids. Aha! Now you're getting it. And so you have these all around the house, especially in summer when there are lots of flies and mahis and all those dreadful things. And as you walk past, give it a drikki. You give it a hug, give it a squeeze, and then you get those beautiful aromas. So, and I use perennial basil in the flower beds because it's just amazing. There is, there are very few perennials with the flower power of what this does um, for your garden. So, there, yeah, there you have it, and I, I hope that answers your question. All right, um, Cindy, I have sweet basil seeds that dried on the plant from last season. Can I use these seeds? Yes, use them to cook with. My goodness, put them in a pestle and mortar, dish, 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 smash them a bit with a bit of olive oil and use them when you're preparing your curries, um, when you're preparing anything. You can also take the seed and you can re-sow it. However, however, what I want to tell you is that when you are purchasing seeds and you purchase them in a packet like this, you are known, you, you are guaranteed to know that you are getting packets of seed that are going to be fresh, that are going to have been treated, and not treated with chemicals, treated in the way that will make them viable for the following season, for that season. Okay, you will also see on the back of the seed packet that there is a, there is a best before date. Yeah, interesting, hey? All right, so, so that's what you're getting. That's what you know. And of course, they've got the instructions. Instructions on the back. If all else fails and they never germinated the first time, maybe that's because you never read the instructions. But So you can use your seed from home, but your seed from home is probably going to be 
um, open pollinated, you might not have stored it in the proper way, and then you might not have the right germination results. Remember what I said to you in one of our previous lives, that seed from all the major seed companies in South Africa, all the major seed companies, has to have at least a 95% germination rate before it is allowed to become a Simba Chippy. Okay? It's got to do that, and only then does it get put into one of these packets. So you're getting good stuff, guys, and, and that's why, that's why we use their packets of seeds. Okay, so, oh, I was going to tell you, let's see if there's any, um, my basil gets red mite. Rosemary, rosemary, your name's rosemary. Ah, oh, okay, that's quite funny. Okay, private joke. <laughs> My basil gets red mite. Your basil is going to get red mite if you don't water it often. So basil needs to be dried, needs a well drained. But if you leave it and it gets too stressed out, okay, you might get spider mite. But I'm very intrigued by that because they generally work as an actual repellent for that. But if you have got red spider mite, then don't stress... What I want you to do is I want you to use the Pest Pro. All right, remember, Pest Pro is um, an insect repellent. It's a bioinsecticide, and this you are going to spray, all right, and it will eat the mites. It eats red spider mite. It eats white flower. This works brilliantly. You can spray today, eat today. It's as easy as that. Spray today, eat today. Nice and simple. Okay. Right, so that answers your question there. Sue, my herbs are struggling with aphids and leaves glistening and sticky. <laughs> Tried spraying with sunlight diluted with warm water. Ooh, Sue, 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 Sue. No, 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 no. Okay. Right, so Sue, I don't know what herbs you've got growing, but if you're getting aphids, here's the plan. Now, Okay, here is the plan. See these little babies here? Okay. And I know I've got some here. All right, here. Nasturtium. Okay. So I want you to plant nasturtiums in and around your herbs and your veggies. Because nasturtiums, not only, okay, we can use them. They're great for using in, in, in salads. Um, you can actually make a nasturtium pesto with the leaves. One of the highest sources of vitamin C. If you're getting a scratchy throat, chew a leaf or two. All right? Chew it. It's wonderful. Um, use them in your, in your herb drinks. But look here. This is why we plant nasturtiums, one of the main reasons. Do you see those things there? That's aphids. Those are hohos. Look, when I squash them, see? See, there's all the juices coming out of them. Okay, yeah, no, I know it's gross, but, you know, this is gardening. Yeah, so there they are. So when you plant nasturtiums, they act as an aphid trap. The aphids love coming to them because they're so soft and juicy and yummy. So if you've got cabbages... If you've got tomatoes, you plant the nasturtiums next to them, and the nasturtiums go, and, and the aphids go, good of, good of, good of, good of, good of, ba! They're there. They are attracted to this. Then what do you do? Then you can spray an organic insecticide, which will get rid of the aphids. You can also simply just use a sharp jet of water, and it sprays the aphid like a bungee jump without the cord. Shoo! Far away. Okay, so we call them insect traps, and that's what they do. And that's why you should plant nasturtiums. Now, nasturtiums as well, easy to grow from seed, guys. Simple, really easy to grow. Um, and, of course, I've got many, many, many uses. Okay, the time is flying. No, you can't be serious. Okay, guys, I am going to go a bit over my time today because things, things are getting wild here. Okay, right, let's get to Rocket. Rocket, one of... The most amazing, amazing herbs. Now, let me tell you about rocket. They sometimes call it Roman rocket. Why Roman rocket? Because it was used way, 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 way from the Roman times. Okay, we know that rocket with a slice of tomato, a little bit of salt and pepper, <gasps> drizzle of olive oil on a crispy piece of sea butter bread. Oh, yummy. <laughs> I want to eat it right now. We know that. We do know that rocket is almost as a perennial herb. It goes on for quite a while. But the thing is, if you let it grow too long without sowing your next batch, the leaves can get quite bitter. Okay. 
So this is from a young rocket plant. I picked these this morning. These are the flowers. Now the flowers are insane. Rocket is um, a member of the mustard family. Okay, remember the mustard family? So start thinking about that. So what can you use it for? Whew. Well, we know that mustard leaves are great on Samis. In fact, when you buy those packs of, of, of salad, you know, salad greens, the mixed salad greens, invariably rocket is in it. It is. It's in there. You taste it. It's got a naturally peppery, mild wasabi. Ah, it's gorgeous. It really is delicious. The rocket flowers are edible. Okay? And when you eat the rocket flowers, you get that same mm, peppery. Jeez, it's nice. Oh, it's hot, 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 hot. Rocket seeds. So after it's flowered, it makes, it makes seeds. They're flat pods. Flat, short, green pods. They can be used to add to salads. You can actually use them in a short stir fry very quickly. Um, rocket can also be substituted as a green for stir fries. Yeah, many of you haven't tried that. So give that a bash. And that also does the job. So when you're sowing rocket, I want rocket to be sown every two months, okay? Because it lasts slightly longer. Because as soon as the leaves start getting more mature, they start get turning bitter. And then you rather get that bitter taste than that beautiful, light, peppery fragrance. So every two months, just like we said, okay, nice and easy. Now, rocket is also one of the best herbs to use as a microgreen. Now, to show you what microgreens look like, I want you to come across here. And in fact, let me bring it, let me bring it up here. God, I'm making a terrible mess here. Who <gasps> is this lovely? This Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson's here. Okay. So imagine when sweet sown, if this was rocket. This is how it's going to germinate because rocket seed is fine, guys. Rocket seed is super fine. So take a look in here. Oh, and the other thing about these packets of seeds, folks, is that they are hermetically sealed. All right, so look in here. I actually want to open this up. Do you see that? They're in a tin foil substrate. Um, so this helps protect the seeds as well, which is really important. Very, very important. So let me show you. Oh, uh, here we go. Can you even see it? Oh, my shattered nerves. I sometimes think that, um, that the big man upstairs, he just wants to laugh at us. You know, when, when we're opening packets of seeds, you're like, oh, well, okay, here goes nothing. I can't even see these things. You're trying to hold your hand over here. You know, your arms need to get longer um, at certain parts of our, of our aging process. But look how fine they are. So when you're sowing rocket seed, please, guys, follow those steps that I showed you a little bit earlier. But this would be if I'd sown rocket seeds in here, except what I've used here is pet grass. Okay, so this is pet grass. Never forget the fur kids. Guys, we have this. We have these in succession, um, pet grass growing, which you can also get in packets of seed. And what we do is we put this out in the veggie garden whilst we're busy pottering around. The dogs come along. Actually, you can see there is one time's hole where one of the children have already pulled out and eaten some of the pet grass, and they just love it, you know, because they go around and they want to eat things. So what you would do is, is if you've sown rocket, and you've got it growing like this, before you're going to start pinching out, you use it as a microgreen. Rocket is high in antioxidants. It helps to fight free radicals, okay? Those are the baddies that go around. Help to fight those. Um, and, oh, wait for this. Hmm, wait for this. They also have aphrodisiac properties. Huh, true story. <laughs> if you don't believe me, Google it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm not going anywhere there. So... Uh, what you can do is, as this is germinating, take your little schnip schnap, okay, and you can, this is how you would harvest, this is how you would harvest it, okay, to use on your Samis if you were using rocket. And pet grass, of course, if it's good enough for the pets, it's good enough for us. Um, and then what you do is, is you would have your next one, in two weeks time, you would start your next set of rocket if you're wanting to use it for microgreens. Okay, so it's about that continuous use that's what we're wanting all right so let's put this baby back here um okay let's just see questions 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 oh come alive 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 okay question very simple question what else is rocket good for rocket is incredibly incredibly good as a folic acid okay 
what, if, what, what does folic acid do? It's really important for all our cell development. And it's also very high in vitamin K, vitamin C, and vitamin A. Okay, got those. So not only is it deliciousness, okay, but it's also good for us. So a couple of things. I promise you I'll tell you my, my pesto recipe. Let me quickly, quickly tell you. Now remember, you can make rocket pesto as well. And you can make basil pesto. So this is how it is. It's a cup full of leaves. Okay, a cup full of leaves. So that cup full of leaves, half a cup of parmesan. And good parmesan. Don't buy the old cheapy stuff. Good parmesan, grated nice and fine. A half a cup of good olive oil. Okay, you got that. A third a cup of pine nuts, and I know pine nuts are very dear, but you can substitute those with any other nuts, all right? Um, put that into a blender, blitz it, blitz it, blitz it, add a squeeze or two of lemon juice, put those into clean bottles that you've already sterilized with hot water, yes, let it drain, wada wada, and then pop your pesto in and cover it with a bit of olive oil. You can pop that into the fridge and it can last for a good few weeks. That is yummy. That is truly yummy. You've taken the herbs, you've minced them together, you've pulped them together. You've got all that goodness in one jar. <sighs> Come on, what more could you want? And you grew it yourself. Okay, a couple of other herbs I want to touch on very, very quickly, guys, is over here, and it's going to be about pruning. Um, and this is mint, and all your mint is probably going to be looking a bit like this or even worse. Okay, don't be scared. It's got to do this. Because it, it, it has its seasons when it looks good and other times when it doesn't look good. Okay, so when you're going to prune something like mint, you prune it really hard, guys. And I mean very, very hard. You prune it down flat. Prune it flat, flat, flat. R look, my, my mint is in a pot because we know that mint is very enthusiastic. And when you let mint go in your garden, it will kill everything. True story. You will only have mint left. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to show you with this gorgeous little schnip schnap is this. Look here. Look here. So you put it on there. If you're wanting to remove leaves, okay, put it on there and you can pull it and it pulls the leaves off. You see? Through that little gadget there. You see that? Because it's got a little hole in there. Nice and easy. You see these little things that we learn? Nice and simple. And if you've got one of these guys in your kitchen, I would tie it to a big piece of string or, or, or chain because it's going to get used for everything. And, and, and so hide them away. In our household, I get blamed all the time, all the time for stealing them, which I do. And that's okay because I do own up to it. Uh, but you want to get hold of them and they do the job. Okay, now. Quickly, a few other things on some herbs. Right, we're going over here. My butter is melting. Um, we all know that herbs are great to use as aromatherapy because um, uh, lavender as well as basil is great as a calming, okay? Um, we know that basil has antioxidant properties. So when you're getting all those good oils out of them, we know it's going to be good for sore bones, tired bones, especially if you've been digging in the garden. So guys, I want you to watch this clip very, very quickly, and that's how to make your very own bath salts. This is exactly what we made.
you can see how much we used because this was full and yes it's great for baths soaking getting warm and it's so easy guys it's simple and that's why we, we you know it, it blows my mind we go and we end up buying gifts and we buy nonsense and rubbish and we're all trying to save um we're all trying to economize and make the most of what we got so here it's right here for you right let's get to these guys over here i want to share with you some other herbs we picked these from the garden this morning this is oh lemon verbena one of the best best herbs to use in terms of either making lemon tea because lemon verbena is very very good for soothing for um, nasal congestion blah blah how do you make lemon how do you make tea this is the thing for tea you take very easily a leaf full a handful of leaves into a cup all right into your favorite mug that's it top it up with boiling water put a lid on it and leave it to steep for at least two or three minutes because it's the heat that releases all the oils okay you can add a drop of honey in it but try not to try and like have it okay like as it is you can either then strain it or you can drink it sips gentle sips with the actual herbs inside it okay so lemon verbena is beautiful to use it's great to use with fish um very very nice to use with fish uh it turns ordinary hake into something completely amazing fennel guys and you can get fennel oh look at this show me how to pull it out the out the garden this morning fennel you can grow from seeds as well here's the fennel bulb and fennel remember is used with fish but more importantly it's great to add into salads just these end bits mm. 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 there it is licorice 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 mm. Mm, okay, now I've got bits of, okay, remember when you're using these, use the smaller bits, okay, you can use these smaller bits, and of course, you've got the bulb that you're going to use, the bulb is great for roasting, um, grabbing a few bits of these, roasting them whole, I actually don't even like even cutting them in, slicing them up, I love roasting them whole, depending on the size, but this is wonderful, remember folks, if you are using any of, any, any, herbal remedy any herbal re remedy if it's for blood pressure if it's for whatever you're using or whatever you've read it's very important to consult with your doctor first very important okay what else have i got here bay leaves <gasps> bay leaves now please remember bay leaf is actually a tree it's a tree you plant this thing in your garden and you let it loose folks you're going to end up with a seven eight meter tall tree so rather keep it in a pot or prune it bay leaves when they green and you use them are quite bitter that's why it's better to dry them okay so take them hang them up like that and then you can use them much much better to do it that way i've got this over here which is licorice grass oh, it's delicious when the kids come into the veggie garden um, what we do is we we tell them to uh, break a bit of this and then Mm, 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 mm. licorice all sorts doo -doo -doo -doo. out the garden a really really cool one to use um and of course borage borage is one of the most beautiful herbs it's its flower the flower because it gets that beautiful blue flower one of the greatest herbs to use when you're making your gins when you fr freeze them in ice cube trays uh, they are fabulous i love it and then one of the most important, important herbs of all is this, which is comfrey. Guys, comfrey, everybody should have one or two in their flower beds, in their herb beds, because comfrey is one of nature's best compost activators. Couple of leaves of this thrown into your compost heap, or you can take the leaves, pop them into a bucket with a few holes in it, put a brick on top of the comfrey leaves, and leave it there for a good good few weeks and what ends up coming out of there is this gooey liquid which you dilute into water and you use that on top of your compost heap or you use it as a food it, it's brilliant comfrey is like every garden should have like six seven or eight plants really really important i see a question there was a question about lemon thyme can you grow it from seed guys all the times um, you can grow them from seed, but personally, I'm going to tell you, um, and especially with lemon thyme, because it is quite difficult to get the seeds from it, it's better to rather buy the plant. Lemon thyme, beautiful with chicken or fish, yummy, olives on top of it, a bit of tomato, delicious. Um, 
and with thyme plants also you can't only have one because you're harvesting it so much that you need to have more and more and more okay sure guys we have moted right through this but what i do want to tell you is that please if i haven't answered any of your questions i will get to it later today um, i'll make sure that i answer all of them and remember that the gardener magazine is on shelf guys it's on shelf and in it we've even got herb of the month okay herb of the month really important and this is here for you we've got a lockdown special which you can get your digital version um you get for three months you can get your magazine on a digital version for a hundred bucks guys you can also subscribe at www.thegardener.co.za to get your hard copy delivered to you. This is what we refer to as a hard copy. Also, if you want to know everything about herbs, veggies, and what to grow, look out for the new Grow to Eat magazine. That is going to be on shelf very, very soon. Um, folks, and remember, I will answer all your questions. There is so much in the world of herbs. Um, there is so much. I mean, I have literally just skimmed the surface. Um, oh, I will tell you, touching my hair, <laughs> I've just thought of something. Do you know that besides rosemary being used as one of the best barbecue sticks in the world that will not catch a light because it is still living and not like one of those dried, terrible barbecue sticks that have probably been imported from China. Um, rosemary, if you take a, a good few handfuls, put it into some warm water, leave it there for a long while, sieve it out and you use it as... A rinse, it helps with grey hair. <laughs> it helps with grey hair to disguise it. And it also is a good hair conditioner. Now, there you go. Guys, a very big shout out to Gardena um, with their schnip snap shears, Mayford in their seeds. Thank you so, so much for your support. Without you, I would not be here. Um, guys, stay safe, stay warm. The pandemic is coming to its peak. Um, wash your hands. Wear your masks, um, be practical, um, but also be safe. Um, love you all. Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. And most importantly, happy gardening. Tanya Fisser Alive was proudly brought to you by Mayford. Grow your own from seed to plate. Gardena. Passion every season. And tanyafisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.